Welcome back to another Action Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to talk about everything camera. With that said, let's get started. All right, so here I am in the Bazalot Quest sample. This is a sample that comes with Action Game Maker. If you go to the hub here, if you were wondering where to get the sample project, you can click on the samples tab right here, and this is where you can download it. So if you want to click on it, follow along, that's fine. I'm just going to show you first off how to use a camera. So real quickly, just going over when you create an initial game scene, you're going to have a lot of nodes right here. Now, one cool thing about Action Game Maker, you hold shift and click on the arrow, you can collapse all the nodes from the parent. And then if you click on it while not holding shift, it will be nice and organized. It kind of declutters all the parent and child nodes that you have. Now you could also, when you hold shift and click, it will bring them all out as well. So that is some little uh, tip for you. So the thing that we notice right here is that we have an initial camera that comes with every scene that you make. And so let's go over here to the right. These are all the settings for it that you need to set. And you can see that following and zooming is on by default. You can turn them off, but you can see that we have this target ID right here. All right. So if we click on this, this is just an array of strings, meaning that it's just a name. So you would type in like letters basically. And what you do is when you add an element, you're saying this is one ID that this camera will have access to following. So for example, this one is going to be player. Now player is just an arbitrary one that I came up with because I always have a player object and that's usually what the camera follows. So I will always remember that it's player. But in a multiplayer, you might have player one and player two. And what this is going to do is this zoom camera in particular, because that's the class of, you can see if I hover it, Right there it says zoom camera 2D. So the more that I have of these, if these are on screen together, then the camera will zoom out to try to show these objects, but will prioritize, I believe, the first out one. So that's what this zooming max is. How far do you want the camera to zoom out to keep all the, the players in, in the camera? And so that is specifically what this camera is designed for. Now, most games where you're just single player, this is all you're going to have is just a single ID, most likely on each camera. And I'll show you why here in a, in a second. But this is really the basic setup for a camera. This is kind of all that you need is you need an ID and you just need to say whether it's going to follow or not. I'm going to show you about camera limits here in a minute. But let's just see what else we need to do to get this camera to work. So in order for this ID to mean anything, we have to first put it on an object. So let's just create another player. All right, and this is just gonna be setting, just gonna just be a fake player here. And let's just say this was my player though. I'm gonna add a child node and I'm going to type in camera target settings. All right, I'm gonna hit on create. So then I'm gonna go over here and it's gonna say, what is the target ID of this? And I would say the player, because that is the target ID that I gave this camera scene. So then because this has a camera target setting, and the ID is player, this camera right here is going to target my player when this scene runs. Now there is one more thing if you're running with a, more than one camera, is that the game scene right here also wants to know how many cameras you have. So you gotta click on this array right here and you can see that it's automatically added the initial camera. But if you were to add more cameras, you would want to add them here. So for example, let's say I have a camera and this one is gonna be cut scene one, and then I'm going to just make sure that I add it. This is the target ID. So I want to make sure that this cutscene one is going to go to where the cutscene needs to go, which maybe it's its own object, right? So cutscene one object, right? And then in this object right here, this would be cutscene one. We would want to add a target, a camera, uh, camera target settings. And then we would say this is cutscene one object. All right. I know the naming is all over the place here, but this is just an example of how to get these uh, working. So if we were to go in the game scene right here, we have this on our cutscene one object. The last thing we would need to do is we would need to go to game scene right here. And then we would need to either, there's a couple of ways we can add it like this. We could drag it over and it will plop right in there. We could also, if we clear this, we could also click on it and it will show a list of these. And then you can even narrow it down even more by typing. And then boom, there's our cutscene object. 
And so this would let this game scene know that there are two cameras to be used. And this one has a target of the player. And this one has a target of the cutscene object one. All right. So that's theoreticals. Now let's get into some practical use. I'm going to close these windows, not going to save them. And now we've got a practical use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, I want my player when it spawns. The first thing I want it to do is show a camera of this sword. And I'm going to actually do it when the player walks. So when the player walks, the camera is going to be looking at the sword. And then when the player is idle, the camera is going to be looking at him. Just a little simple thing. I guess it's not really practical, but at least we'll see it working. So in this village right here, I'm just going to uh, bring this all up again. You can see I have my initial camera right here, and it's already dedicated to the player. So that's, that's really good. It's what I want. Now, since I want to keep the same limits, and we'll talk about that here in a second, but since I want to keep the same limits, I'm just going to duplicate this one, and I'm just going to call this the sword camera. And then I'm going to go to here, and I'm going to change this to sword, or whatever tag that I wanted. And then all I got to do is in the village, I just have to make sure that this sword is associated as a camera that we can use. All right. Now, the last thing I need to do is assign the sword target area or a camera target. I already have that one on my player with the proper ID. So now I need to assign it to the sword. So I can click on this sword right here. Now, since I did child edit child thing, I have to click on this written note and I can click on this scene and it will take me right to the scene. So it's really nice. Another way that I can do it too, that I like to do is just type in sword. There's my pickup sword scene and boom. So then I'm going to add a camera target setting and I'm going to call it sword. All right. So these are all now set up. Now we need to provide the logic on switching the cameras. And it's actually really, really easy with Action Game Maker. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set my idle as the initial state here. I'm going to go to my walk action. We're going to add an action. And this one is going to, I'm just going to type in camera. It's going to give us all this available ones. And then I'm just going to change the camera index. So zero is the first camera on the list. So one would be the second camera on the list. I'm going to click add. And then in idle, I'm going to click on the same thing, except for I'm going to say zero because we want to go back to that camera. Now, real quick, I'm going to go to scene transition and I'm going to make the village be my set start scene. Additionally, if you didn't know, you can use uh, the start points right here. So this is the start point for where that goes. I'll have a separate video on start points. But now if we play tested this, now we should see this camera in action. So I'm in idle right now, so the camera's following me. As soon as I move, we can see that it's following the sword. When I'm back in idle, it's following me. And then when I'm moving, it's back at the sword. And look, there I am. Woohoo. All right. So that is the camera system, how to switch them, how to set them up. Now let's talk about the one thing that I wanted to talk about, which was the limits, how to set the limits. All right, so first let's go down to our camera. Also, if this is pretty cluttered, you can always just go like this, type in camera. Oh, there's my cameras, sweet. All right, now we want to, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. We want to see what exactly sets them. So we can see that there's a limit right here and these limits are by default, Let's see, I'll remember six, nine, sixty. So by default, these are the default values. So they're huge numbers and all this stuff. If I go up here, I can see that my grid's right here. So this is zero and this is zero. So I always know that my top and left are most likely going to be zero. So those ones are, are easy to kind of figure out. Another thing is, is that by default, the draw limits is off. And I'm not sure if we can see this real good, but if I turn it on, Nope, this ain't a good one. Let's go over here. And let's turn it on and off. You can kind of see a little yellow right there. That's the limits turning on and off. If I bring it down just a tad bit, we could see that that's the yellow line is the limits. All right, so I do want that limit up the top. So you can click on this and you can kind of drag it left and right and you'll move it. That's kind of cool, but we also know that it's just zero. So I'm just going to go like that. And then since we did 
we do need to set these. So I'm going to say six or 970 to see that it brings it in close. 970. And then we can zoom in right here and we can either, again, adjust it manually, which they move pretty fast. So it's really nice to know what it is. I happen to know, and actually, if you didn't know, one thing, one way that I was getting it was I just went to the sprite. This was a, an image and then I did collision tiles for it. But right here, this is the sprite of it. You can just hover over it, or actually, I guess you got to click on it and it tells you the size right here. So this is how I knew what size to give it as far as my limits go. But yeah, so that's how essentially how you use limits and you can use different limits for each one. The smooth option right here, it means that when it comes up to the limit, it will be a nice and smooth. So that one is a cool setting if you want it. The other settings that you might want is to position smooth. So this is basically camera smoothing, right? So you turn it on and then you would just adjust it like that. I did want to show you one more setting and it's about the drag. So in order to show this, I'm going to bring the right out a little bit. This way I can move the camera out here. So I have the camera selected so I can just right click and say move node here. And we can kind of see it a little better outside of here. And what the drag is, is it's an area where the camera will not follow you. So it's kind of a little dead space. Usually games have them kind of in the middle. And then when the player starts to move a little bit more, that's when the camera starts to react and move. And so what we can do here is we can go down here and say, draw the drag margin, All right? So that draws it. Now we aren't actually using it because we haven't enabled it. So when you click on enable horizontal, enable vertical, this is actually going to enable it. So I would have to move outside of this blue range or, or at least touch the blue range for the camera to start working. And then this is where you would just adjust, adjust as, as you needed. So here would be some offsets. Here's the left margin, the top margin, bottom margin, and so on and so on. So yeah, and then you can visualize it, turn the visual off. You can also do the screen limits as well, just turn it off when you need it. But yeah, this is how you can add some flavor to your cameras. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, you can comment below. Go to the official forms Discord. We'll get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.